Hello again, friends. <clears throat> On this gray, rainy day, I have decided to try to read you a poem for the first time in this series. And that is a poem likely known by many of you, or a series of poems, called Four Quartets by Thomas Stearns Eliot. <clears throat> and uh, the four poems in this book, which is an amalgam of those four, um, were published separately first over the years between 1936 and 43, when this book first appeared as a collection. And um, I will not possibly pretend to summarize anything about such a massive, uh, important poet in the English canon, but um, I will say my personal lore with Eliot is uh, very much tied to my own falling in love with poetry um, in my late teens, which was also a time where I was starting to travel and see the world. <laughs> and my dear sister and I, who I would like to dedicate this, um, this reading to, uh, who I miss dearly and love dearly <laughs> and yeah she very much um, influenced my movement towards adoration of poetry and <laughs> Eliot and um, we had this thing where when we were traveling we would recite the opening lines of another Eliot poem of the love song of Jay of uh, Prufrock together the first lines of which are, let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out beneath the sky. And my sister and I would do a kind of call and response thing where we would each say a line um, to each other. And <laughs> so that feels like a fun bookend because uh, Proof Rock is actually, uh, you know, seen as, as Eliot's first um, first poem that really cemented his um, position as a great poet and for quartets is really seen as the final one even though he he did live several decades after its publishing and won the Nobel Prize and you know was was very well known and established in his lifetime yeah this book is really seen as his somehow his statement on life and time and humanity and all these big questions. So without further ado, I will start reading it. So I have nothing fun to show you except just this beautiful <clears throat> old edition, but I can show you the epigraph in this beautiful Greek writing, which I actually can read because <laughs> at that same fun fact, at that same time in my late teens, I actually studied Greek for a year. Um, but I won't dare offend any of my dear Greek friends or anyone else for that matter by trying to read it. And I will just read to you the Wikipedia translation of these two quotations that are both from Heraclitus that are the epigraph to the four quartets. So the first one is, The wisdom is common. The many live as if they have wisdom of their own. And the second the way upward and the way downward is one and the same. <clears throat> Burnt Norton. One. Time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future. And time future contained in time past if all time is eternally present, all time is unredeemable. What might have been is an abstraction, remaining a perpetual possibility only in a world of speculation. What might have been and what has been point to one end which is always present. Footfalls echo in the memory down the passage which we did not take toward the door we never opened into the rose garden. 
My words echo thus in your mind. But to what purpose disturbing the dust on a bowl of rose leaves, I do not know. Other echoes inhabit the garden. Shall we follow? Quick, said the bird, find them, find them round the corner, through the first gate, into our first world. Shall we follow the deception of the thrush? Into our first world, there they were, dignified, invisible, moving without pressure over the dead leaves, in the autumn heat, through the vibrant air, and the bird called in response to the unheard music hidden in the shrubbery and the unseen eye beam crossed, for the roses had the look of flowers that are looked at. There they were as our guests, accepted and accepting. So we moved, and they, in a formal pattern, along the empty alley, into the box circle, to look down into the drained pool. Dry the pool, dry concrete, brown-edged, and the pool was filled with water out of sunlight, and the lotus rose, Quietly, quietly, the surface glittered out of heart of light, and they were behind us, reflected in the pool. Then a cloud passed, and the pool was empty. Go, said the bird, for the leaves were full of children, hidden excitedly, containing laughter. Go, 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 said the bird. Humankind cannot bear very much reality. Time past and time future, what might have been and what has been, point to one end, which is always present. <clears throat> Two. Garlic and sapphires in the mud clot the bedded axle tree. The trilling wire in the blood sings below inveterate scars appeasing long forgotten wars. The dance along the artery, the circulation of the lymph are figured in the drift of stars, ascend to summer in the tree. We move above the moving tree in light upon the figured leaf, and here upon the sodden floor below, the boar hound and the boar pursue their pattern as before, but reconciled among the stars. <clears throat> At the still point of the turning world, neither flesh nor fleshless, neither from nor towards, at the still point, there the dance is, but neither arrest nor movement, and do not call it fixity, where past and future are gathered, neither movement from nor towards, neither ascent nor decline, except for the point, the still point, there would be no dance, and there is only the dance. I can only say there we have been, but I cannot say where. And I cannot say how long, for that is to place it in time. The inner freedom from the practical desire, the release from action and suffering, release from the inner and the outer compulsion. Yet surrounded by a grace of sense, a white light still and moving, Erhebung without motion, concentration without elimination, both a new world and the old world made explicit, understood in the completion of its partial ecstasy, the resolution of its partial horror, yet the enchainment of past and future woven in the weakness of the changing body, protects mankind from heaven and damnation 
which flesh cannot injure. Time past and time future allow but a little consciousness to be conscious is not to be in time. But only in time can the moment in the rose garden, the moment in the arbor where the rain beat, the moment in the drafty church at smokefall be remembered, involved with past and future. Only through time, time is conquered. Three. Here is a place of disaffection, time before and time after in a dim light. Neither daylight investing form with lucid stillness, turning shadow into transient beauty with slow rotation suggesting permanence, nor darkness to purify the soul, emptying the sensual with deprivation, cleansing affection from the temporal. Neither plenitude nor vacancy, only a flicker over the strained, time-ridden faces, distracted from distraction by distraction, filled with fancies and empty of meaning, tumid apathy with no concentration, men and bits of paper, whirled by the cold wind that blows before and after time, wind in and out of unwholesome lungs, time before and time after. Eructation of un unhealthy souls into the faded air, the torpid driven on the wind that sweeps the gloomy hills of London, Hampstead and Clerkenwell, Camden and Putney, Highgate, Primrose and Ludgate. Not hear, not hear the darkness in this twittering world. Descend lower, descend only into the world of perpetual solitude. World, not world, but that which is not world. Internal darkness, deprivation and destitution of all property. Desiccation of the world of sense evacuation of the world of fancy, inoperancy of the world of spirit. This is the one way, and the other is the same. Not in movement, but abstention from movement, while the world moves in appetency on its meddled ways of time past and time future. Four. Time and the bell have buried the day. The black cloud carries the sun away. Will the sunflower turn to us? Will the clematis stray down, bend to us? Tendril and spray clutch and cling. Chill fingers of you be curled down on us? After the kingfisher's wing has answered light to light and is silent, the light is still at the still point of the turning world. <clears throat> Five. Words move, music moves only in time but that which is only living can only die. Only by the form, the pattern, can words or music reach the stillness. As a Chinese jar sits, as a Chinese jar still moves perpetually in its stillness. Not the stillness of the violin while the note lasts. Not that only, but the coexistence or say that the end precedes the beginning, and the end and the beginning were always there, before the beginning and after the end, and all is always now. Words strain, crack, and sometimes break under the burden 
under the tension, slip, slide, perish, decay with imprecision, will not stay in place, will not stay still. Shrieking voices, scolding, mocking, or merely chattering, always assail them. The word in the desert is most attacked by voices of temptation. The crying shadow in the funeral dance, the loud lament of the disconsolate shimra. The detail of the pattern is movement, as in the figure of the ten stairs. Desire itself is movement, not in itself desirable. Love is itself unmoving. Only the cause and end of movement, timeless and undesiring, except in the aspect of time caught in the form of limitation between unbeing and being. Sudden in a shaft of sunlight, even while the dust moves, there rises the hidden laughter of children in the foliage, quick now, here, now, always, ridiculous the waste, sad time, stretching before and after.